Good morning. Good morning. I hope you guys are having a great day. Um, I'm inside today. The humidity outside is ridiculous. So I just decided we're just going to sit inside where it's air conditioned and it's not 200% humidity because that's ridiculous. Um, we are in our second study this week and this unit is talking about how to love your neighbor, which is a great unit for all of us to study. We Everyone needs to learn that. Last week, we looked at who is our neighbor. I mean, we're supposed to love them, but who are we talking about? Who is our neighbor? And this week, we're looking at what does love look like? I mean, you want me to love my neighbor, but what exactly does love look like? And so we are looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 through 13. And we're going to just look at that and... We're going to try to figure out what God's direction is for us and, and how the Holy Spirit is leading us in this study today. Oh, my notes are just... Um, so, we're going to read our verses, and then we're going to pray over them, and we're just going to dive in, and we're going to try to figure out what the message is for us today. Okay, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 13, verses 1 through 13. If I speak human or angelic ton tongues but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and understand all the mysteries and all the knowledge, and I have all the faith so that I can move mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. And if I give away all my possessions and I give over my body in order to boast but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy. It is not boastful. It is not arrogant. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not irritable. Does not keep a record of wrongs. Love finds no joy in unrighteousness, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Verse 8. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. And, we, and when the perfect comes, and the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. But then, face to face, now I know in part, but then I will know fully, as I am fully known. Now these things remain. Now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Okay, so that's our word for today. And we're going to pray over that, and we're going to ask the Holy Spirit to guide us through this lesson. Heavenly Father, we come to you today and we want to know, Lord. We want to know your love. We want to be an example of your love. We want to be filled with your love so that the people that we encounter, that we show that to them, that we give them the same grace that you give us. But we need the knowledge, Lord. We need the guidance and we need the, the change of heart that comes with that. We need to have you in us to be able to give that out to others, Lord. And we ask today for an understanding. We ask for a change of heart that can only come from you. And we ask for all this in your precious name. Amen. Okay. So there's a message here in our book. And it says, when God established creation, he saw step by step that it was, very, that it was good. However, upon creating people, God declared that it was very good. It, in a sense, it was because creation was complete, because it was finished, and it was very good. And on another level, however, we understand that God values people in a special way. In fact, he loves us so much that he sent Jesus here to pay the price for us, to reconcile us to himself so that he could have the family that he had longed for. And in that way, we are called to value and to love people in ways that reflect God's love. And that's that's what he calls us to do. He calls us to give that love, that, you know, completely free, un, 
abided love. And it's hard because we're human and we're not wired that way. But he calls us to become wired that way. To to learn to love like he does. And so if you look at the very first uh, verses there. It says, if I speak human or angelic tongues, but do not have love, I'm just a noisy gong. I'm just that that Charlie Brown's teacher in the background going, rah, 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 rah. it's nothing. It's just an annoyance. It's a, um, a clattering to hear our own self, our own voice. I have a huge fear of that. There's lots of times when I want to say something either in a lesson or... Um, in Wednesday night when Rocky or Emily are leading or Sarah is leading. And I, I think I have something that I want to input, but I, I, I like gauge myself. I'm like, mm, but is it really beneficial or do you just like hearing the sound of your own voice? And so I kind of put a, a limit on that, that if it doesn't add to what's being spoken, then, you know, don't be that clingy thing in the background that just distracts be um, silent and let that moment sink in. But but you don't. I don't always have to speak to add something into it. Um, and it goes on. It says, if I have the gift of prophecy and I understand all the mysteries and all the knowledge, and I have all the faith so that I can move mountains, but I do not have love, I am nothing. And if I give away all my possessions. And I give over my body, but it's only in order to boast. And I don't have love. I gain nothing. And nothing is, the definition of nothing is not anything, a lack of existence. And if I do all of these things and I have all of these things, but at the core of it, at the center of it, if I'm not doing it or using that, with love, then it's nothing. It's just void. It's empty. It's um, it's like a black hole. There, it's literally, it's just nothing. And it says down at the bottom of our book here, it says, love is essential in every other aspect of our Christian life. And without it, everything else is empty. If you want to have a significant life, you will not... Find it in your skills, in your power, in your intellect, or in any of the gifts that God has given you. The only way your life and my life will truly matter is choosing the more excellent way, the way of God's love. So even if we have everything else that we could possibly have, and we're blessed with these gifts that God has given us, the abilities that God has given us, if we're not using them, and we don't have love for others, then it's completely pointless and it's absolutely meaningless and it's doing nothing. It's it's just empty. It's void. It's like a check that doesn't have enough money in the bank to clear it. It's void. There's It's not worth the paper it's written on, literally. Um, if we go on to the next part of our verses, I really like this because there are, I just counted them a minute ago and now I already forgot them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten different things that it gives us to explain what love is. But of those ten, love is only two of them. Love is not eight of them. I thought that was really interesting. And so it starts out, and, oh, I did think this was really good. Um, If you look up. A Google search definition of love, it says a strong feeling of affection or desire toward someone. And if you look up the same Google search definition Bible of the word love, it gives you 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verses 4 through 8. So if you look up the Bible definition of love, in Google. It gives you 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verses 4 through 8. And I thought that was so good for us to be looking at that today. And so the first two of the 10 
descriptions of the word love is love is patient and love is kind. Love is patient and love is kind. And so, you know, love, if you're looking at it in the worldly sense, it tells you that it's a feeling. Well, the problem with the feelings is, is you can hurt my feelings. And if you hurt my feelings, if you hurt them bad enough, I may not feel love towards you because I let my feeling get in the way. God's love does not deal with feelings. God's love just deals with love. And love is patient. And love is kind. So even if you hurt my feelings, I need to have patience. And I need to let my feelings go over here and heal themselves. And I still need to show love towards you. And I need to be kind towards you. No matter what my feelings toward you are, no matter what you may have done to hurt my feelings, I need to show patience and I need to show kindness. I need to choose patience and I need to choose kindness and not rely on what my feelings over here feel because my feelings are fickle. Because one day you could hurt my feelings, but the next day you could do something that makes my feelings just feel overwhelmingly towards you. So my feelings are fickle and I can't rely on them. They're, they're, they're a bad judge. I can't rely on them. I have to rely on what I know. And what I know is what the Bible says. And the Bible says that love is patient and love is kind. Regardless of what my feelings are. Love is patient and love is kind. And so I need to keep those things in mind. Patience is like willing to wait and to bear a hardship and to, you know, particularly so that others can experience good things. I'm willing to put my wants, needs, desires back here on the back burner because I want you to have everything that you need, everything that you want. I'm willing to put my things over here because mine, you know, it's okay. I, I, I'm fine. I, I'm, I'm, I'm well, I'm good. So I'm going to put that over here on the back burner and I'm going to put what you want ahead of what I want. That is patience. And kindness is like, you know, it leads us to being gentle and generous with both our words and our actions. We actually look for things that we can bless you with. Um, you can't, or I can, let's, let's take that generalization out of there. It's not you, it's me. I can be upset with something and I can let my mouth override my duty as a Christian. And I can speak things that are against something or someone. And I have to be really careful and then come back and, and this is my new thing that I've, I've done, is if I do that, if I say something and then later that evening or that day or the next minute, I have a conviction on my heart and I know, I know those words that I spoke were not from God. Those words that I spoke did not build somebody up. They did not edify them. They did not speak love over them. I'm forcing myself to go back and apologize. And maybe it's not, I mean, to whoever I spoke that to, to make a confession that that was not of God. That was of Satan. I let Satan come in and I let him rule what I was saying and how I was feeling. And I let my feelings lead me. And that is not of God. Because my feelings, we just established that they're fickle. They don't know what they want from one minute to the next. It depends on how I feel because they're fickle. But God's love isn't fickle. His love endures forever. And his love is patient. And his love is kind. And that's what we're called on to be. That's what you and I are called on to be. It doesn't matter how we feel about it. It doesn't matter if we necessarily agree with it or if it's what we um, 
believe necessarily to be true, it matters that we are patient and that we are kind. That is what love is. And that is the love that God is calling on us to do. The things that love is not, and there's eight of them, love is not envy. Love does not boast. Love is not arrogant. Love is not rude. Love is not self-centered. Love is not irritable. And love does not keep a record of wrongs. Ow. Oh. Think about this. There's this tiny little cellar that I've built in my heart. And when someone hurts my feelings or they have wronged me in some way, they get drugged down there to that tiny little cellar. And I, I talk very ugly to them. And I, I torture them in that tiny little chamber in my heart. But the problem with that is, is the only person that hurts, the only person that affects is me and my heart. And that shouldn't even be in my heart because my heart should be filled with kindness and with patience because that's what love is. And so if I'm filling my heart with envy because my neighbor you know, they have something that I so desperately want or my coworker has something or a promotion or something that I so desperately want or my friend at church has a gift that I so desperately want. They have the ability to do something that I just so wish that I could do, but I can't. It's not the gift that God gave me. So I can't be envious of that. I can praise that God blessed them with that gift. I can be so thankful that God blessed them with that gift. And I can reap the benefits of them having that gift. But I can't be envious of that. And along with that, if God has blessed me with a gift, if God has given me some kind of talent that is mine and mine alone, I can't be boastful of that. I can't be that clanging symbol that just annoys the ever-loving life out of someone because God blessed me with that. I can't be boastful. And I can't be rude. I can't let my feelings direct my actions because that's rude. Because my feelings could be hurt and my feelings could be injured in some way. And I can't be rude to someone Because my feelings are leading me because they're hurt. Because that's not love. We already established that. Love is kindness and love is patience. And it isn't rude. And I can't be self-seeking. Just like when I told you that I I monitor um, is whatever I want to say, is it going to add to something? Or do I just want the spotlight on myself? Um, Today, (laughs) I don't have the best eyesight. So I literally had to take the lampshade off of the lamp in the living room because I need the light to be able to see. But I have to be careful when I'm out. Do I really need to speak in whatever is being said, whether it's at work or whether it's at church or whether it's wherever? Do I really need to speak? Or is is whatever being said exactly great enough And it it just needs to be left exactly the way that it is. Because I don't need to be the sinner. Whatever is being done, that is the sinner. And God's working through that. And I just need to sit back and soak in what is being done. And just receive that for myself. But not seek the light for myself. And love is not irritable. You know, just because... You're doing something that maybe isn't what I want done. That doesn't mean it's not the right thing to do. It doesn't mean that whatever you're doing isn't leading someone else in the right way. It just means that it's not, you know, it's okay. I I don't have to be irritated about it. I don't have to be angry about it. Because irritability is not love. 
and it does not keep a record of wrongs. So that tiny little chamber in my heart, that little cellar that I drag people down to, no, no. I have this thing um, that I've been doing. I mentioned it to you before. Um, if I catch myself, something's happened, somebody said something, I'm at my desk working, and all of a sudden I start having this imaginary conversation in my head because they said something and I should have said this or they did that and I should have done this. And the next time I have them on the phone, we're going to ha- No. No. That is Satan having some kind of crazy conversation and some kind of argument in my brain that hasn't even taken place yet. And so I'm like, nope, no, that is not of God. That is not kindness. That is not patience. That is crazy talk. And that is Satan. And I am not going to have some imaginary conflict going on in my brain that hasn't even happened. So no, no. And I literally just picture this whole thing as like this cartoon, if you will. And I wad it up like you used to get, I don't know, maybe you still get cartoons in the Sunday paper. I don't know. But if back in the day you used to get cartoons in the Sunday paper. And so I just picture this crazy argument that hasn't even taken place that's nutso because I'm letting Satan run interference in my brain and have this weird, stupid argument that isn't even real. I just wad it up like you would a paper and I literally throw it in the trash because I'm not going to let Satan run this stupid crazy argument in my head that hasn't even happened. So we just don't do that. I'm like, no, no, you can speak love. You can speak kindness. You can speak patience, but anything other than that, it's not going to happen. It is literally not going to happen in this space between my ears. And there is no more little cellar in my heart. Not going to have that. It's been dismantled. It's been rearranged. It's now a very beautiful room. It's got lovely decorations. And the only thing going on down there is love, patience, and kindness. So if you wrong me or you hurt my feelings, we're going to take you into my heart. And we're going to show love, patience, and kindness. Because that is love. That is love. There's a thing here in our book. I thought it was so good. It says, the love of God is genuine not like the counterfeits of this world you can't look at the world to give you a definition of love because I don't think most of the world understands what love is unfortunately we rely so much on how we feel to lead us in how we love. And, I mean, we can talk about it being our neighbors, our co-workers, or whatever. It's also our family. Sometimes it's especially our family. They do something. They hurt our feelings. They pull away. They shut us out. They make decisions that we don't agree with. They do all, they do a hundred different things. It doesn't matter. We love them. Period. We show them kindness. And we show them patience. Because that's what love is. We don't draw a line in the sand and say, you're either with me or you're against me. Nope. We don't say, I don't agree with what you're doing. So I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Yes, I can I don't have to agree. I don't have to think it's perfect. My life isn't perfect. There is absolutely, um, there's no sin scale. There's nothing that you could ever do that's worse than anything I have ever done. And there's nothing that I have ever done that's worse than anything that you could ever do. God doesn't weigh sin. There is no little bitty sin and there is no great big sin. 
A sin is a sin. And he loves us the same. Period. And that's what we're called on to do. We are called on to love. Period. Not to judge. Not to condemn. Not to... Um, well, I love you if you worship the way I, I worship. I love you if you sing the songs I like to sing. I love you if you come to church with me. I love you if you do all these things. All these stipulations. No. No. There is no stipulation. It's free. It's given to us. And if it's given to us freely, then we are to give it to others freely. There's not, There shouldn't be any kind of thing that anyone has to do or not do to receive our love. Because the only reason you and I have the capability to love at all is because God loves us. And showed us love. And if we can see that and accept that and receive that, then we need to give that freely with no expectation and no judgment and no um, conditions. It's unconditional. It goes on and it says, I love this part. This is talking about love. Love finds no joy in unrighteousness, but rejoices in the truth. Love, it, it bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. So you may be at a point right now and you think, I literally can't take any more. You can you can. You may think, I am past my point with that person. No, you're not. Because love is patient. You may think, that person has done their last whatever to me. Love is kind. Love is putting their wants, their needs, their desires, their whatever in front of mine. It goes on in the last part of our verses and it says, love never ends. We're never going to run out of God's love. He's never going to reach a capacity point where we have enough population and that's it and God can't love us anymore. No, love never ends ends. Love is here forever. It goes on, it says prophecies they will come to an end and tongues are going to cease and knowledge is going to come to an end. All of that is going to come to an end. It's going to stop at some point. And we know that in part we prophesy in part but when the perfect comes, the partial will come to an end. And when we were a child, we spoke like a child and we thought like a child and we reasoned like a child. But now, now we're a man. Now we're a, an adult and we think like an adult. Well, that's talking about like your Christianity, your walk. When you were a young Christian... You acted like a young Christian. You thought like a young Christian. You realized like a young Christian. But now, God has given you more knowledge. He's given you the ability to get into his word and to understand and to look at it. And maybe we don't have the understanding that someone else it, um, is gifted with. And that's okay. We have the understanding that God gifted us with. And he gives other people a better understanding so that they can teach us and they can guide us and direct us. But he gives us an understanding, all of our very own. And if we don't get into the word and look at it and read it and dive into it and become a part of it, if you will, then we're not going to have that understanding. But he gives us the gift of it. So if he's given us that gift, why would we not 
accept that gift. I mean, that gift is holy because it is of God. So take that gift of understanding, take that gift of reason, and apply it to the Word. And he, when you read it, He's going to illuminate something for you. Something is going to stand out that is a message from God specifically for you at that moment. And the crazy part is, is you can read that same passage a year later, six months later, a week later, and you're going to get a different message because you're at a different point. You've grown to a different level. And so now when you... Now you are that man. And when you became a man, you put away all of those childish things. And now you see only a reflection as in a mirror. But when we see God face to face, it is going to change everything. And it says, now I know in part, and then I will know fully as I am known fully. And these three things remain. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Love conquers all. No matter what is going on, no matter how dire things seem, love conquers all. Everything. There's a note here. I made this at the bottom. I thought this was really good. And it says, the measure of Christianity, this is out of our book. The measure of Christianity isn't how much we know, but how much we love. The truth is, none of us will be complete until we see the Lord's face to face. The Lord's face. And we are seeing it face to face for the very first time. Then we will be complete. Until that day... We need to grow in God's love. And to do that, we need to know and be known by the genuine love of God. So if we are known by the genuine love of God, then we need to give the genuine love of God. And I found this. I thought this was so good. It says, to love is to do, to feel, to become. Love is not passive. It is not still. Love is in action. Love is forgiveness. Love is setting aside what I would rather do so that I can do something for you. Love is setting aside what I would rather have be true and, and the way that it is to honor you and to what, put what you would like to have done or to be true To put that first. To put what my wants, needs, and desires are back on the back burner and put yours to the forefront. And put you to the forefront. And and look to see what I can do through for you. How can I build you up? How can I edify you? How can I speak truth and love into you? Because you are so important. You are the most important thing that God did the day he made you. You alone are truly one of a kind. You have a gift that God gave specifically to you. No one else has that gift the way you do. No one else has the authority over that the way you do. God gifted you with that and you alone. You are talented and you are brave and you are smart and you are have an understanding that comes only through you. You alone have something that God gave directly to you and he gives you the power to do it. You just need to be strong enough and brave enough and I need to speak enough love into you for you to pick that up and go do it. Because whatever it is that God is calling on you to do, you are the only one that has the power to do it the way that he's calling you to do it. It goes on and it says, love is a continual movement and change and growth. So I, as a child of God, 
need to change and need to grow and need to expand how my heart loves. I need to look at different ways that my heart can love. I need to look at different ways that I can love. What is something else that I can do that I can spread God's love? Because that's why I'm here. That's why God put me on this planet is to show his love to others. So I need to open my eyes and open my heart and look for the way that God is calling on me to show love to others. He's giving me ways. He's he's laying the opportunity right in front of me. And I need to have a willing heart to walk through that and to do what he is calling on me to do. And love is adapting and it's fitting and it's making space in my heart for others. It's not just closing it down and keeping it around this family that I have. It's not keeping it around my church family that I have. It's not keeping it around the youth group that I have. No, it is opening it up. It is like it is like opening just a door to a stadium and seeing it filled with 40,000 people inside there and thinking, okay, how can I show love to those 40,000 people? How can I show them that God loves each and every one of them and he gifted them with something special and I want to be that person that helps you bring out that gift that God gave you I don't need to to bring out the gift that God gave me I don't need that to shine like that light I have without a lampshade God's going to do that I don't need to do that God's going to take care of that I need to work on what can I do to help the gift that God gave you shine What did he bless you with that I can feed into, that I can love through, that I can build up, that I can help you make that shine? That's what God's calling me to do. He'll take care of of me. I don't need to worry about me. I need to focus on what can I do through God, through his love to help you shine, to help you be the you that God's calling on you to be. That's where I feel like my goal is in this. When I read this, That's what I feel like God is calling me to do through his love. Because love is kind and love is patient. Love isn't boastful. It isn't envious. It isn't, you know, it isn't all of those other eight things that that are not it. Love is kind and love is patient. That's what love is. And that's what that, this message said to me this week. Um, Hopefully you got your own message out of it. Hopefully God spoke something to you through this. And if he didn't, then read 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 through 13. Because he has a message in there specifically for you. I mean, we hear these verses lots of times at um, weddings and different things like that. and, And it'll be, oh, that's so sweet. And oh, that's just... And it is. I mean, it truly, truly is. But we need to be listening to it through eyes of what is God speaking to me? What is he telling me through this? And because there is a message in there specifically for you. And I pray that if I encounter you, if if you and I are in a circle that we're doing life together, or even if we're not doing life together, that I broaden my circle and and we are doing life together, that I speak God's love into you, that I speak his praises into you, and then you find that gift that he has gifted you with, and you take that gift out and you bless someone else with it, and that you grow his love towards someone else. That's that's what I pray is happening. And so we're going to finish this up in prayer today, and we have Sunday school, in-person Sunday school, We're doing that. That's a thing. So if you're not joining us in church, here's your invitation. You can come to our class. There's tons of classes at our church. We are at the First Baptist Church in Eminence, Missouri. And if you go past a church on your way to our church and the lights are on and the people look great, go in there. Meet with them. God placed that in your path for a reason. He made you look over. He made you see that sign today. Go in. There's a calling for you. There is someone in there who wants to show God's love to you. So I I beg you, find a church today. Start 
Today is a new day. Today is the day that God is calling on you to move with him in in life with him. And so go to church today. Sunday school starts at 945 and church starts at 1045. And I promise you there is a message for you today. So we're going to close in prayer and I'll see you at church. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for your perfect love. That you show patience with me, Lord. That I need and I know that I have tested your patience. I know that I have, Lord. And that you're still there. And that you're still showing patience to me every single day, Lord. And I I thank you so much for your kindness. That you... You love me without a without a feeling, Lord, that, that if I hurt your feelings, that you're, you're taking that love away from me. That if I offend you in some way, that you're withholding that love from me. That's not you. And I pray that you move in my heart so that that's not me. I don't want to be that person that, that loves through feeling. I don't want to be that because my feelings can't be relied on. My feelings are fickle. And I pray that you take that out of me. My feelings are wrapped up in Satan and I don't want that, Lord. I want a pure, unadulterated, kind, patient love. And I want to show that to all the people that I come in contact with, Lord. Please give me that. I beg for that, Lord. That is my one request. I want that, Lord. I want that. And I pray that you bless my heart with that and you give that to me so that I can freely give it to others, Lord. And I pray your blessing over everyone who is listening to this lesson today, Lord. Move in their hearts and let them feel that love for you, Lord. Let them know in their heart and know because they know because they know that that love for you or from you is in their heart, Lord. And that it's theirs and that there's no conditions placed on it. There's nothing they can do to lose it. It is theirs and theirs alone. And I ask all of this in your precious name. Amen. Guys, have a great day. Love you. I will see you at church. Bye.